Are there enough peas? Are there enough of these crops being grown and capable of being manufactured right now to meet all of the growing demand? It's an exciting time, especially for farmers and for food manufacturers and food eaters alike. Uh, with, when it comes to peas, peas are a necessity for farmers when we look at biodiversity of, of crop and different crop rotations. And I, I certainly believe there, there's enough supply and a growing demand and need for nitrogen fixating legumes like peas to grow on land across the United States and in North America. When you look at it, there's about uh, over 4 million acres of peas grown just in North America alone. And that uh, keeps growing year over year to build soil health on farms across the United States with the farmers that we're working with on a day-to-day -day basis to then build foods that we feed people instead of animals with. So Tyler, why is Beyond Meat importing pea protein from Europe and I believe Canada if there's enough in the U.S.? Yeah, great question. So with Purist, we're, uh, U we're the only U.S. manufacturer today. And so there, there's certainly a lot of investment going in the space to build actual manufacturing facilities that can produce the food. There's a shift between the way food has been eaten in the past from meat, eggs, and dairy to the way people look to eat food for the future, which is powered by plants. And there's an, a significant amount of investment to build the infrastructure to make that happen. Purist has believed in this for over 30 years now, so we've been at it for a long time. And with, with our plan, we've, we've uh, taken investment from Cargill to allow ourselves to build more manufacturing capacity to supply players like Beyond Meat and others so they won't be limited on high quality, great tasting plant-based ingredients. And it's important because I say great tasting because we've all had healthy diets before, we've all ate healthy and it not, didn't taste so good. So how do we build a more sustainable food system that's healthy for people and also healthy for planet? Well, you have to make it taste great. So the sustainable choice is simply the easy choice to make. Tyler, I mean, I growing up, health food was big in my house. We had like rice stream and Vita soy. So you bring up a key point there right now. What is it about the technology, the, the capability around manufacturing itself at this point in time that's so different that enables that to be the case? For, for Purist, we're, we're unique because we're looking at what is the taste, the functionality, and the agronomic profile of the peas themselves for the farmer. And so they work for our various farmers. We work with over 400 farmers in the United States and design proprietary seed varieties that they grow. It's all non-GMO, organic, and we, ha we want them to grow them so they can add nitrogen to the soil, sequester carbon, add to their crop rotation. Then we buy everything they grow back. And then from there is when the fun starts. We take those peas and, and we use technology that allows us to separate the peas and make, make those ingredients taste good that then have the right use case so they can replace their animal counterpart into the foods that food eaters are looking to eat today, uh, which happen to be powered by plants and, and for people's health and also the health of the planet. Hey, Tyler, a lot of our viewers really want to know, uh, A, what's the best tasting product of the ones that are out there? And B, if a quick service restaurant chain is going to do this at scale, not a test in a few restaurants, if McDonald's is going to do this nationwide, who are they going to choose? What do you think? Yeah, great question. When I look at it, it all takes place on what's, what's the food built from. And I'm going to be hyper-focused on that impact it has on the land and that impact it has on, and on my diet. Uh, I choose clean label all the time. I want, I want non-GMO. That's my preference. Uh, that's the way, uh, if we're talking about burgers uh, or sausages, that's the way Beyond Meat has built their, their products. And I think as we go forward, there'll be a lot more uh, people coming to the space. And it'll be very interesting who leverages the right technology and partners with the right uh, suppliers that can help create that future to give, to your point, that product that food eaters want to eat. Tyler, in terms of that supply chain, U.S. farm incomes are down something like 45% from the peak in 2013. A key part of that is because you've seen de depressed prices for some of these major cash crops like corn, like soy, et cetera. How much of that is an opportunity? I guess how many farmers, additional farmers, are you now able to have conversations with to start growing more of these crops that you're manufacturing? And how long does that shift over to some of these new crops take? It's a great question. When you look at uh, what you just explained, soybeans, corn, that's the agricultural system that we've come to recognize in the Midwest and in the northern uh, Great Plains. And what we're doing with peas is how can we add to that crop rotation? How can we break up the, the, 
just the soybean corn rotation and add peas to it. It plays a, a very impactful role with disease resistance, also sustainability of the, and soil health of the various farms. The time is, is now. Uh, we're, we're partnering with farmers all across the, the United States and really for, for a different reason than the past, where a lot of agricultural commodities have been developed to feed animals, and which is fine, but there's a shift. And we're trying to bring that value shift, whether it be organic or regeneratively grown crops, to food. And if you can do that, you're building a sustainable system that not only the scale is needed, the scale can be done because it works for all stakeholders yeah. in the supply chain.